morning, Shirley. Um, we're chatting about uh, literature-based education and the benefits of that and what we can learn from it this month. And there's a quote that says, a house without books is like a room without windows. And I thought that today we can talk about the windows that open up in our children uh, when we read to them what, um, what happens inside them. And we quickly bantered a bit about 10 things that we could think of happen. So well, let's, let's alternate, you, you go first. What do, what do you think is the biggest thing that happens or <clears throat> you've seen happen in your children? Well, I think one of the first thing that comes to mind is just that, you know, our, our imagination is stimulated. Yeah. If we're reading about an apprentice to a goldsmith in ancient Egypt, we get transported to that place and that time. Mm -hmm. And we're living there amongst Pharaoh and the slaves and, mm -hmm. you know, the papyrus reeds along the Nile. And we are in, we're in a different world. Mm -hmm. uh, then we read a story about, um, you know, some missionary in China during a revolution. And you're, again, transported to a different time and a different place. And even if you've never been there, through the words of the story, your imagination is stimulated mm. and you feel as if you've experienced this life or this lifestyle in a different time in a different place. So yeah, the imagination gets stimulated for mm. sure. Um, and I just think you also share these experiences with your kids and you have these wonderful memories and discussion points because you've all read the same story. Yeah. And also it's something different to if you're watching a movie, it gives you the pictures, you know, so you, you, you see it through yes. somebody else's eyes when it's in your imagination. You know, I remember clearly Gladys Aylward dragging her um, suitcase along the tracks in the middle of winter in Russia as she was heading across to China. And, you know, you actually can feel that emotion much more than if somebody's telling you what you need to be seeing. The other thing that I thought of is the bonding that happens between you and your child. Like you said, you, you have a shared experience, something that you can talk about later, but it's just, it's a moment when everything life pause in life just pauses, all the chores pause, all the things that might have happened around the, the desk pause, and you just bond in, while you read together which was one of my favorite things looking back now <laughs> with the kids all being big and grown and gone. Um, and the other thing that, uh, that we can maybe also mention is that when, when you're reading aloud to them, you develop their vocabulary. Do you want to chat about that? Well, yes. Obviously, a story is normally written in a little bit more formal language than we speak every day to each other. And it's also rich in new vocabulary um, about places, things, events, you know, occupations, whatever it is, than we might even use in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so it fills that database in the brain with new words and understanding of new things. Mm -hmm. And later, when we want our children to produce their own writing, they are better equipped to be able to do that because they've been fed this this model of grammatically correct language that's yeah. rich in, you know, new words. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the same thing with exposing kids to something new is that often if you read a story about something that would not necessarily be their interest, you're giving them um, an idea perhaps about a future career or a place that they want to travel to. Um, we made note of James Harriet, which books we we've loved and um they want to maybe a child is spot oh wow that's what a country vet is like and i know that when we read um jane austen uh, to our kids all of them wanted to go and and see either her house in bath or um my son wanted to go and see where mr darcy lived which was just the bbc film shoot but you know, those, those, um, it, there's just a, an interest that is developed out of reading. So, you know, you've got the bonding, you've got the imagination, you've got the language development, you've got this exposure to experiences um, that they wouldn't yeah. normally have. What else um, happens when we read? Um, 
yeah, I just want to reiterate the, the visiting places. You know, we read stories about the Fish River Canyon or the Blue Grotto in Italy. Mm. And um, sometimes children end up wanting to go to those places and see it for themselves because they were captivated by the story and the place yeah. that, that, that happened there. Um, the other thing is that they learn to deal with challenging topics. So... Mm. <laughs> I was thinking now when you spoke about how we get stirred of how many times I've I've cried at the end of a sad story, you know, yeah. and the children sometimes laugh at me because as children, they don't identify with the character as I do as a mother. I'm thinking of that book, Skylark, oh, um, yes. the story of the, what was the first one in that series? Do you remember the name? Mm -mm. The, the woman who comes to be a stepmother for the children yeah. in America and how she longs for her home at the sea. But anyway, um, and but but there are also other stories. Um, another one that comes to mind is a book called The Hundred Dresses, which is about children in school sort of bullying and ostracizing a certain child, and how at the end the, the main character regrets that she didn't speak up and that she didn't actually bef mm. befriend this little girl yeah. who was so sidelined by the rest of her classmates. And We've often also referred to it when we've had incidences at sport and places we've been where some children have been nasty and, and bordering on bullying. And then we've been able to talk about how to deal with those kind of situations. Mm. Um, other things just might be things like death or divorce or war or what, whatever difficult topics are, you know, in your family's circumstances. Sometimes if you can read a book about them, you can talk about how other characters dealt with them or your children can just realize that they're not alone, that these are just things Struggle. that are common yeah. to human yeah. nature. We, you know, there's good times and there's bad times. Yeah, for sure. And then then also the, the fact that when you are reading and you're discussing these things with the kids, you train them to become discerning readers. Um, we shared last week about learning from imperfect characters and how... I just wasn't prepared to go through a certain book. And there have been books through the years of homeschooling that we've just said, mm, okay, not this one, and just put it onto a, a not today pile and um, or a not ever pile in some cases. But, um, you know, that's the point is that you want to, children, not only in literature, but when they're reading articles, when they are looking at the news, when they are getting fed stuff on social media, we want them to be discerning readers. And when we expose them to literature and critical thinking and we engage and discuss things that are coming up in the stories, that is something that we are training them towards is being able to discern, is this good material? Should I be spending my time on it? Is this truth or um, something that I should just chill? Uh, <laughs> and sometimes it backfires on the mom. <laughs> Today I got a book from the library that came highly recommended. And my son looked at it and said, but this is probably going to just be twaddle because it's going to be a series and the children aren't going to grow in character and I don't oh. want to read it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so well trained. Is, you know, he's entitled to his view, but we'll still we'll still dip into it and see if it's as highly recommended as it's supposed to be but yeah. you know at least he's he knows he, he's allowed to have an opinion so yeah, we're getting sure. there <laughs> for sure. and then the last thing I mean maybe you want to talk about this is how it increases IQ um and 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 the impact that it has on um the cognitive ability of of the brain well you know if, if you think of what Charlotte Mason said she said that you know stories feed the brain mm. and I think we don't even understand, just as lay homeschool moms, we don't understand all the processes that are possibly stimulated by it. Mm -hmm. But researchers have found that when children are read to, they score higher on their IQ tests. And look, IQ is not the, the only measure of success or mm -hmm. the only thing yeah, that really. determines a child's success. But I think it's just encouraging to know that there are measurable dis differences in children who are read to. Mm -hmm. and you know, um, there's also research that shows that parental involvement in education, whether it's school education or home education, mm. also 
improves academic outcomes. So we, we definitely can only do good by reading to our children. Yeah. Um, there's no harm. And I think we're keeping them off screens. We're building relationship with them. Yeah. Like you said, we're opening the windows to the world for them yeah. um, from a, the safety of our home environment where we are there to shepherd them. So, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It would, would kind of be like a face palm moment if you don't. So, well, yeah. there you go. Ten reasons to, to encourage reading in your home. Nice chat. Mm -hmm.